I think that's the question. Does writing have a place in your life? Better. Okay. All right. I'm going to be starting to do some video editing for my first writing blog, which I think is the most unstructured of all the vlogs that I've, I'm doing. <laughs> and I'm, as you see, playing with my camera here. <laughs> anyway, um, this is very much a work in progress. So I guess um, here I go. Um, the question of the day will probably be, um, Does writing have a place in your life? Here we go. Okay, so I've already downloaded some clips for me to work with. Um, let's go ahead and fill in my questions since I know that's gonna be there. Um, oh, let me bring this down. <laughs> you definitely gotta figure out this whole camera angle situation. Let's see. Uh, Sitting here with my niece, up and coming author Tyler Jones. Um, she has written an amazing series. Actually, she's written several, but <laughs> we are currently <laughs> working on um, editing her um, series. She'll tell you a little bit about it in a second. But today, I'm, we're just going to be showing a little bit of us picking out like some fonts and things like that. So you'll be seeing her from time to time on my writing blogs. So go ahead, Tyler. Tell people a little bit about yourself. Okay. Uh, recently graduated from college. That was five years in the making. Mm -hmm. Sorry if you can hear laughter in the background. There are people recording a shoot or something at my house today. Otherwise, that would not, there wouldn't be a, like a laugh track in the background. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, we, we keep it real on this vlog. I mean, I'm sitting in bed in my comfy, so it's fine. You know. <laughs> Mine is Spider-Man, so. There you go. Because <laughs> I am very nerdy. I love creating. I love storytelling. That's what I went to school for. It was originally fashion design, but I was just like, in my free time, all I'm doing is writing my book series, which is the one that we're working on today. I've been working on it kind of 10 years in the making. I came up with the title and I conceived a lot of the characters back in 2014, my freshman year of high school. So that was just like a little bit of a rundown of me. Because I will talk a lot. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So um, just to kind of facilitate this a little bit, again, we are being very candid. Um, it's raining where I am. So Same. you may hear some things in the background. Margie is very upset because I'm in one room. Her dad's in another room. So you'll probably hear her in the background. But regardless, I'm excited that... You know, Tyler and I have been working on this book for a while. It's uh, first of all, let me just say that the book is amazing. I am, am playing the role of mentor and editor. And so we are polishing the first book so that, you know, we can get it ready for publication. She's already written book two and three. And so right now we're just doing part of this process, figuring out, you know, what kind of formatting and things we want to do. So, um, like I said, the book is called Epic of Rogue. So Tyler, let's talk about some fonts. What have you, we talked a little bit before, so go ahead and just kind of tell these guys what you told me earlier about what you think the main body font will be and we'll go from there. Yes, so originally it was one that I found on Google. It's called Jost, because I was just like very much like, yeah, the main font is going to be a sans font. I don't want it to be a serif. I kind of want to do something that's like simpler to read, just looks really clean on the page. And then I knew that I had a like serif font for like the flashbacky and like dream type sequences that occur in the book. 
and I had this one font that I really liked, but I recently just realized that it's like Arabic and it only shows up English for me, but it's actually an Arabic font. So I was like, that probably won't be a useful font in like InDesign or something where it's actually going to pick up and be another language. Mm -hmm. So I was like, I need to do a different one. And so now I find myself very into EB Garamond or Garamond for Microsoft. And so it's like, oh yeah, I would use that for like the flashback and dream stuff. But then I was like, I just read through Harry Potter and I was just like, well, this is a fantasy book and it's in a serif. Maybe my whole book should be in serif. So I really like that one. But now I'm having to figure out what the secondary font should be to separate between like the main story and then anything that's like a dream or in the past. So that's what we're going to be doing today. Yes. So you are going to, I guess, share your screen and we're going to look at some fonts and, you know, talk about them and see what we like. While you're doing that, um, I'll explain. So one of the things that we realized um, as Tyla was, you know, writing the story and we're going through the editing process is we don't want to have too many fonts. As cool and creative as that sounds, it's not really readable to have too many different fonts. But because there's a lot of like magical elements and dream sequences, we do want the reader to easily be able to distinguish between what's action happening in the book and then what's dream. So we mm -hmm. didn't want to find um, two different fonts that complement each other, but don't contrast too much. And we're not going to have too many different things happening. So I'm excited to see what we're looking at today. So these are the fonts that I have selected so far. Okay. I did not know a Brimo was going to be a Sans font. Like I said, the Microsoft like page is not delineating anything visually. So I was like, this isn't super useful other than listing it out, but it kind of still is nice that I can just see the ones that I by name and drawn to, and then I can see what they look like next to each other. And so right now you're looking at them at 11. Are you thinking that's the font you want to use for publication? The size? Yes, I do think so. Okay. Yeah, because 12 sometimes still feels a bit big for me. And I'm like, 11 is just one step down. And I know 10 would be way too small. Can I see? Can you like highlight them and just let me see what they look like in 12? Oh, sure. Yeah. yeah let me... Oh, well, then what do I have to go to the top Okay, and go back. Okay. So, I mean, I don't, I didn't notice a huge difference between 11 and 12. Mm -hmm. And we're still early in the process. So, mm -hmm. um, right now, because you like 11, let's go ahead and work with that. But I would say we might revisit it just because we want to make sure that we're able to reach a wide audience. Um, mm -hmm. You could always, let's say, release this book, you know, as 11, and that's like your signature, then maybe down the road, you can do a large print version or something. Not bad idea. Not bad. Okay. And then I think too, it's just like, part of why I was like, mm, maybe 11 is just because bigger font, it would be more pages. <laughs> so I was right. like, there's also just like, if it ends up being like, not a huge difference of like, quantity for the page count between 11 and 12 i probably would just stick with 12 anyway but you know I'm, I'm, i i'm personally leaning towards 12 just because i think it's more of a common expectation mm -hmm. well i'll go ahead and make this 12 it didn't undo my undo but we can always like i said we can always do some research and figure out if there are any trends that are leaning you know towards one way or another um, we don't always want to publish towards trends, but we also don't want to alienate readers by not paying attention to trends. Right. And it's like you said, there's not that big of a difference between the 11 and 12 anyway, so I'm not going to be like, oh, it's do or die. It has to be 11. Like, it really doesn't have to I be. will say out of the ones that you have listed, I do really like the Garamond and the Cambria. I like those two. You know, Cambria was kind of my first choice oh because okay. this is like it started to become alphabetical after this one when you do too many different fonts and they're all like on the same page like your eye is just being drawn to that yeah. thing that's different so with that in mind i really like that we've come to a decision of a font that is different but it's not so obviously different 
yeah yeah i like it i think that i think that will work well mm-hmm. what's also cool is that i'm using cambria in my other book form like my other book series oh cool. so it could just be that cambria is kind of like my standard that could be oh, your signature font mm-hmm. <laughs> like that'd be cute yeah. i mean unlike my business cards and stuff i use quicksand because i think it's cute but for the books yeah <laughs> i love it all right so i think that is where we are gonna wrap this up we have some um more editing to get to i'm telling you guys um when you see this book that she is putting out ethic of rogue it's you're gonna love it i mean the only way you would not love her book is if you just absolutely hate fantasy and then this isn't for you but <laughs> or romance if, you, if definitely... you appreciate the tiniest bit of like ma- magical realism and if you appreciate two people finding each other in any way whatsoever if you're human you should be able to relate to this so and i think bottom line is everyone's gonna love t and that's just what matters (laughs) i know and he's not even the main character but he is amazing (laughs) that's what matters like (laughs) president t that's what we're talking about now just be ready (laughs) all right So I am just making a quick little update. This writing blog is being harder than I thought. I was supposed to do it last week. Ended up doing a food blog instead. So anyway, um, <clears throat> I'm sitting down at my desk. I'm scared to show you guys how crazy it is, but I am excited that Eric is working on our new shelving unit that's gonna help with this tremendously. So anyway, I have two laptops. Um, one that's personal and one that's for work the one that's for work um i try not to think of it as mine because if i ever leave my job it goes back to them 100 percent. like this is not mine so i keep it very separate um and so i'm kind of working like in the little corner i do move them around but i just i literally finished doing some work and so i'm trying to do some writing i have a rare opportunity in the middle of the week to do some writing so I'm gonna try it. I have been hitting an absolute wall with my Mark of Bloodsian series. I don't know, it's like I've got most of your thing like outlined and stuff, it should just be there. But I think a lot of it boils down to that when I wrote the original series, it was so fresh and new in my mind. And like, I wanna present this story to the world in the way that I really feel. Um, that the original series is just kind of lacking, but I'm just having difficulty um, getting the words onto the, the, the page. So anyway, um, I'm working on the first installment of that new series, which if this was the Eternal Curses, this would be the prequel. And so I'm writing the story of um, Seth and Marcos right now. And if you don't know who those characters are, um, I believe um, there's a version available for um, people to download on um, Patreon. So, um, yeah, yeah, anyway. So, um, I don't know. I just, I'm just gonna sit here and see what I can do. So, here I go. Just to backtrack a little bit, um, a few months back I posted, I think everywhere because I was so devastated that I had lost the significant amount of the research that I had really done, originally done for the series and I was just going to be using a lot of that research so I had to redo a lot of that research which took a bunch of time, took away from me, you know, being able to write and so anyway, I've just been scrolling through all the different like documents and stuff that I have. Um, for the different you know research that I'm using for the story and so um, pull, pull up like my outline pull up references from the original series as to how this you know new stuff is going and so now I am ready to t- 
take the research paired with the outline paired with the references to the original take those three things and actually just write so here i go a little bit of a break just to show you a little bit of what's going on um so let's see here <laughs> try not to get too up close and personal but i'm basically just kind of working in a word doc and i'm doing some background information on the basics of the heaven that i'm portraying in this story because that's where seth the marcos are again if you don't know seth the marcos um, definitely visit um, the Patreon page to see if you can download the first two books in the original Eternal Curse series. I was even thinking about releasing the unfinished third book. Um, I don't know yet because there's a lot of stuff in there that no one really knows about. So I kind of want to keep that stuff secret. I don't know. We'll see because I'm rewriting the whole thing anyway. But um, so I just wanted to show you kind of what I'm doing like I said, I don't want to show you too much of my crazy office, but just know that, if, you know, we are working on establishing some better shelving situations so that I can start showing off my office a little bit more. So anyway, um, I'm, I'm excited with the progress that I have. So I'm just going to keep writing until I have to, you know, stop and get back to work. <laughs> All right. So I am obviously back in bed. Um, I like to do a lot of writing in bed, but don't worry, I'm not going to be in bed the whole time. You'll see me writing like at my desk and other places, but it's the weekend and that's when I get the majority of my writing in and I spend a lot of time in bed because I'm tired. Anyway, <laughs> sorry about the bad lighting, but again, I'm just not really feeling the bright light at the moment. So. The quality of this video will range based upon where I am, what the lighting is. This is just me being mean people. So I am going to be sharing my screen a little bit during this process. This is a different kind of vantage point of my writing process. Um, I'm probably going to be recording a lot more footage for the writing vlog, um, but that doesn't mean all of it's gonna be in the writing vlog. I think some of it I'll probably have to cut down and segment. And if it's good stuff, it's probably will be stuff that I have for um, exclusively for like my paid um, Patreon supporters. But um, I just think anyway, that's that that's neither here nor there right now like that'll I will figure that out in the editing process but what I mean is is that I'll probably just have a, like a lot of footage and then I'll have to like sift through to make it into something watchable because no one wants to just sit there and watch you type the whole time plus I don't want to have my um you know unedited um but copyrighted words just out there in progress, you know, so I'll be figuring a lot of that out. Anyway, let's get into the process. <laughs> All right, so let's get rid of that. Okay, I need to pull up. So I'm more. So before I actually start um, writing, I do want to show you a little spreadsheet that I have going on. I've been doing this from kind of year to year. And so, so far in January, it says that I've written 655 words towards my toy box of games. That is a pending title. It doesn't mean that that's going to be the, the final um, title for that book, but that's where it is right now. Um, I don't understand why I don't have my... Um, it says cookbook here, but it's really not a cookbook. Um, I'm going to change that since I know it won't be that moving forward. Um, I 
good. Da, da, da. Anyway, so this is the uh, basically the memoir that I'm working on for food. And so for whatever reason, I haven't put my word count in here. So that is actually prompting me to go back to my other documents. So I'm going to come out of this and go into um, Word because I've been working on that predominantly in Word. I actually started out in Google Docs and moved things over. So kind of going back and forth. But anyway, I want to see what my current word count is for that. Um, I don't think I don't think I've pulled it up recently, so let me just find it. <laughs> so let me see. I'm going back and forth. I know you guys are probably gonna get annoyed with some of this, but I am gonna actually get to writing. I need to check 2023 and basically just do a comparison. So 9,705 words is where I left off in 2023. So I'm going to see if that word count is the same because that will mean that um, I haven't added anything, but I'm pretty sure I have. <laughs> so we're going to say this ended off at 9,705. Nine seven zero five. All right, I'll come back to the other stuff later. But let's look at all of the words and stuff that I had to come up with um, towards like publishing work, even though it's not toward the final product. And then I will move on from this spreadsheet. But this is part of my writing process. I have to do all this stuff. So now I feel better about that because I'm like, I wrote a lot of stuff to not have that word count count for anything is heartbreaking. So I'm going to put that. So, so far for, for January, um, for this just general, anytime I'm working on something where I'm adding words that aren't towards the final product, I'm going to put it here because I want to get, why is this in bold? I don't know. None of this should be in bold. So let me just go ahead and highlight this and make sure none of it's in bold. Okay. I feel better about that. Okay. So let me get myself together. I shared a little bit of that. And the rest of this, I am going to just go ahead and kind of close out. I'm not going to give any information about that. Um, as you can see, um, some of the you can see the titles of some of the recipes that I'm working on. So I don't mind sharing some of that. A lot of this is going to be, um, you know, blurred out because I'm not trying to give too much away. But um, just showing you what I've been working on. And like I said, in the editing process, um, more or less of this might be shared depending upon if I actually do two separate videos. I don't know. That's a lot of work, but we'll see what happens. Okay. So, um, that's that. So I'm not going to be working on, um, the, I wish I could eat that book right now. I'm actually going to be working on the toy box of games. So I might be adding to this, um, 655 number. So I'm going to click on this tab. I usually, what I do is I go back and read the last things that I wrote. Um, this, all of this stuff right here has been um, shared with the paid Patreon members. So they are, you know, getting the story as it's developing. So what I'm doing with this story, I'm very much into this idea of a zero graph draft. So I'm, I'm, writing the story but i know that what i'm writing right now isn't going to be the ultimate but the idea is for me to just to get it down on paper um i'll be going back and editing in the sense of like grammar and stuff like that but more than just that i'll be going back through and figuring out areas where maybe something needs to be fleshed out um or you know diminished or whatever so the this everything that i'm doing now like i said i'm sharing with my paid people but um there, there will be at minimum, at very minimum, 
at least two more drafts before this goes into publication. So once this draft is finished, there should be another draft of like developmental type stuff, then at least um, a draft for like editing. So not, um, I, I think if I do the bulk of the stuff up front, the next two drafts will be fairly painless, but we'll see. So I'm gonna go back and um, read what I wrote last and expand upon that. Actually, I'm going to let my speech, text-to-speech feature help me out on this a little bit because I'm tired. And um, I think it will not be easier for me to just listen to it for a minute so I can close my eyes. Chapter 7, going to church. The morning sun and the bearing of the alarm clock came to see him But here had no one to blame but himself. It was Sunday, and there was never a good enough excuse to be with the church unless there was blowing off. In this case, his grandma was too much worse. He reached out to the church and he was like, I'm going to find the church. Hey, Ben, grandma, breakfast looks good. Would you like some coffee this morning? I knew you were up late last night and I don't want you to go through the sun. Here we go. And I really don't know. Alice would have told the coffee coffee with effort if Kobe had known it earlier. You're a grown boy and with all the work you did the other day. I don't think a little caffeine will hurt you. Well, I know your grandpa used to give you six kids. I hardly drink it myself, but I keep the pot in case someone ever wants one. keep writing obviously um I only just got started but I realized that this can probably get a little boring so I'll come back and check with you guys later um at another time okay <sighs> so I'm in my front room I'm actually at my dining room table um it's not messy but we're in transition as you can see I still have some Christmas stuff out and it'll probably be there until February. Not not all of it, like we're slowly putting things away. I'm just saying it'll probably be February before it's all put away. Anyway, I am trying to get in a little bit of writing. I'm also editing some videos. Um, I'm having a cup of lemon ginger tea and um, I made myself a steamed egg patty and I smothered it in my spicy tzatziki sauce. <laughs> spicy because I put too much black pepper in it this time. I actually kind of like it, but uh, for general use, I just need to reduce the amount of black pepper. So it's actually really working for me right now. So anyway, I'm writing and um, yeah, that's what I'm doing right now. do this so I don't think it's like earth shattering or anything but I'll maybe like write a line or two and then I have to go back and like reread what I've written to see do I really like what I just wrote with the previous content um sometimes I go back and forth and check my own stuff like I'm, I'm writing a character who you know I don't know 13 or something and later at some point I mentioned the person driving. I'm like, wait a second, that doesn't work. So I have to go back. So that's kind of what I'm doing right now. I My writing progress is very slow, but it is what it is. So just wanted to explain kind of what I'm doing right now. I think I'll do another one of these where maybe I do some screen sharing. I think I'm, so I'm toying around with this. Like I said, this is my first writing blog I've ever done. So I'm still trying to figure out exactly what that 
you know, looks like. thing um I may or may not have mentioned this before I think I mentioned it in the reading blog but I wanted to mention how it relates to writing um as a as a writer it's, it's always good to get feedback from like other people but sometimes when you're in the process you can't really stop what you're doing find someone to read what you just read and read it back to you so it's really great that lots of software and hardware all kinds of things now just come with a uh, uh, text-to-speech feature where you can hear back what you've written. So a lot of times, um, even though I read it myself, after I think I've got it where I want it, then I'll listen to it just to make sure that it really sounds the way I want before moving on. And so that's usually a good time for me to take a sip or you know stretch or eat or something like that and just listen to what I just wrote. So I'll be doing some of that as well. in something for the moment and come back to it later that's where i am i'll be checking with you guys later Alrighty, so <clears throat> i am at my desk and i am writing i am specifically working on um my mark of blood sand series that i've been having such a struggle with and so I'm kind of picking up where I left off yesterday. I've gone back to the drawing board on this several times, but I really feel like I'm finally getting some headway. Um, and so I'm working on content for the first book in the new series, which would basically be a prequel for the other. I feel like I said this in the last little clip I did, but <clears throat> I thought I'd share the screen just a little bit. And now some of this will probably be blurred, but um, uh, I'll, I'll show you some of it. We'll see what I have to show you guys. Right. So one of the documents that I'm working in right now is this Word document. And this is some, not all, but some of the research I've done. So I've got like some terms here that I'm using for the book. <clears throat> And then I am going to be basically doing my version of what I feel like, you know, the heaven for this story will look like. So I'm breaking down the different um, category of angels, seraphim, cherubim, thrones, dominions, virtues, powers, principalities, <clears throat> the archangels, and the choir angel, and then later on the chorus. And I'll explain all of that in the book, obviously. And so each um, category of angels I have broken down details of what they look like physically how they behave before and after the war in heaven and so um <clears throat> that's what all of this is and then so the main characters that i'm working on right now are just regular angels at the lower end of the um thing so you can see some stuff here but so there's three of them that are gonna um be like the main people in this book but two of them are actually the main characters so seth marcos and then there's also semias who i've mentioned in the previous series but he literally would just like mentioned and i'm actually gonna flesh him out as a supporting character here so you can kind of see some things about the two of um, the three of these characters and um what i'm going to be working with them here and so um i'm going kind of back and forth between this document and what i'm currently working on 
And so this is the first book is Mark Seth and Seth and Marcos like brothers. So this is um, a little prologue that I've written. I think I've already shared that with my uh, Patreon supporters. And so these are just letting me know which characters to try to mention at during this book at some point. And then I have this outline. So I've broken it down <clears throat> where I go with um, every other chapter will be from either Seth's point of view or Marcos's point of view. So I start out with Seth. So he's chapter one, three, five, seven. So like the, the uh, chapters. And then when I get to Marcos, he's the even chapters, two, four, six. Um, all the way down to right now what is projected to be 26 chapters and then I have descriptions of like all of the other characters that should appear in this book at some point along with some other concepts and so that's kind of what I'm currently working with right now so let me stop sharing for just a moment <clears throat> so those are the documents that I'm working with um, right now filling in that information um, the little where I have like chapter one, two, three, I'm filling in the content that's supposed to occur in each of those chapters right now. Um, so like I said, back to the drawing board on this, um, but at least I, I feel like I finally have the direction that I want to go. And so that is what I am working on right now. And um, I'm really excited about it because it's giving me an opportunity to really hit home maybe some ideas that I only kind of touched on the first time around. And so this will allow me to develop those a little bit more in depth, um, portraying these two angelic um, creatures as kind of like brothers in a system where there aren't really like brothers, like they not really. So once you, you get into it, I've, I'm, you know, painting a picture of this type of heaven where you know, all, you know, angels are, you know, the creation of God, but they have these different hierarchies. And it's kind of like, for me, I think like a beehive, all of the bees in the hive are the children of the queen. There are no uncles and aunts and cousins and things like that. They're all children of the queen. And so that's kind of the reality in this um, heaven that I've created. But yet, some angels do form like certain bonds where they have like a favorite or something and so and that's what i'm going to be developing as to where you know seth and marcos are these two angels who have favored each other amongst the others and they're like brothers and then one our antagonist this isn't a shock i hope not lucifer <laughs> starts you know shaking things up you get to see this dynamic of these two brothers kind of being pulled in different directions and so that's what I'm working on right now. So I am going to um, start writing. <laughs> He's starting from rest and he's going straight to duty. So what is his duty again? I forget. Um, Marcos, a drafter of designs, supports the efforts of the powers. <clears throat> forget what the powers do. Let's see. Powers are the keepers of history, the master of all things creative. Okay, mm -hmm. that's helpful. Okay, so let's. Go.
the cycle we have rest worship duty fellowship okay well, let me do five just in case oh because i need to label them okay so one is set. The way I have it right now, let me do one more. Okay, let's start out at the rest. He goes from rest to worship. So his day begins to men's with rest. I want them crossing paths in the way I have it written right now. They're not exactly crossing paths. So let's see. They should both be at the fellowship at the same time. So maybe I have done it right. So if he starts out at rest and he goes to duty, and then worship. Oh, okay. Maybe. Yeah, that actually makes sense. I don't know why I'm having so much trouble with it. So, so when he goes to worship, he sees Marcos. And they are at fellowship together. That doesn't make sense because he's at duty. I knew I messed up somewhere. So their cycles would be the same. They wouldn't be different. Yeah, their cycles need to be the same then. They don't need to have different cycles. I don't know why I thought they needed to have different cycles. That's what it is. He wouldn't be able to see him singing at worship if he wasn't at worship. <laughs> My brain. Okay, so. This video all day and I think I finally have gotten to the point where I'm done the only thing I think I need to add is of course this clip and um, some music um, I did want to revisit my little spreadsheet real quick um, I'll show the screen for this but I wanted to give you guys an update on not a bunch of details but just show how at the beginning of this video, my spreadsheet looked one way and now it looks a little bit different because I went back and looked at my documents, did some recounting, plus I've been writing so the numbers are a little bit different and I just wanted to show you that real quick. So um, I don't know why I clicked on the wrong thing. It's been a long day. Okay, screen share. There we go. Put that out of the way. Come here. Here we are. So again, working title, toy box of games, new words. You can see these different delineations here of different numbers. Those are the different segments that I set down to work on that. Same thing here, 
had two different little segments that I wrote for that and then this number didn't change. So again, I didn't get as much writing as I wanted to. However, I just thought about the goal that I set, which I'll do a goal update later. I did at least 4K words this month, which was one of my goals. Even if that whole 4K wasn't towards actual products, I'm not, that was publication work, at least I was able to find time to get some writing in. So let me come out of this and um, just calling back to the question that I posed earlier, does writing have a place in your life? And for me, I desperately want writing to have a place in my life. I wish I had more time to write. It's so tough to like get in a zone and wanna write and then have to deal with life. But it happens so at least for the month of January I feel good about what I've done and we'll see what I can do in February hey guess what if you like what you see you can totally subscribe to this channel you could also give it a like and leave me a comment I would totally love that okay bye bye